Okay, um, there is a feature in the editor that I haven't talked about yet, which is run level in your own application. It's up here or here, F5, and um, it basically works like this. You can tell the editor to uh, start your uh, game application and append the level file name as a command line parameter. So this way you can implement your game project to load uh, the level from the passed in command line parameter. And this way you can have fast uh, level uh, loading from inside the editor and also it's good if you want to give uh, a working build of your game to some artist or level designer which is to create levels for you and uh, these guys probably w would uh, like to be able to start the game with and provide a file name to load the level from. Okay, so um, you can set it up in settings, run level, and say when clicking on run level, uh, please save the level and start the following application. So here you have to provide the uh, path to your uh, game project or executable. Okay, so let's do it. Here, debug, and then our executable file. And very important, append the full path of the level file uh, of the safe, okay, which is going to be this level file here, this whole path, um, as a command line parameter. Okay. So, of course, in order for this to work, you have to make your game project aware of command line parameters which is what I'm going to do now. Okay. So not very difficult. So I won't explain much since I guess you guys know how to do this. Okay, so now that I have the first command line parameter here in file name, I have to give it to my game one class, and therefore I need to make game one aware of a parameter string level file. So in the constructor file name will be set to level file and finally here in the initialize method I can load the level from file name so um, let me provide a fallback solution so file name Only then you're going to read in the level from file name. Otherwise, please load level1.xml as a fallback solution. Okay, this is it. So if I start it now, it should work the same way. But now I can do this I can save the level as level 2. And now I can change the level and make some cool level 2. Okay, some cool new level. Like this. And now the only thing I need to do is not even save. You can just click run level in your own application and then the editor uh, will save it for you and start the game, your game project and your game executable and append this thing as a command line parameter. So, voila, this is what you get. You see your level immediately in your game engine. Okay. Uh, I decided to do this uh, basically because uh, in the beginning I started to 
include the editor related uh, code in my game engine code in order to have an in-game level editor but I somehow disliked this approach because I had editor related uh, code mixed up with my game engine code and uh, it just didn't feel right so that's why um, I decided to have an external editor application in the first place uh, but still I wanted to be able to very fast uh, change something and then see how it feels in my game so that's why I implemented this feature okay okay now um, now let's see how you can handle uh, custom properties so let's add some custom properties to this uh, item for example first item so let's add property one let's have it boolean and prop two will be vector two and prop three which is going to be of type item in order to show you how this can be used so let's set it to some item for example the last item and let's change this by 4 and let's change this to true okay now let's save it okay let's get back to our code now you can access the custom properties right after the level has been loaded from file okay so in here what can you do if you take a look at the level class you're gonna see that uh, the layers the list of layers is public and inside a layer the list of items is also public I did this in order for you guys to be able to access everything inside the level and uh, do what you want with it so you could also uh, you can access everything and could provide your own draw logic or whatever so it's all there uh, it's not hidden so what can we do now okay we can say if um, first of all let's have an item item uh, item now let's get an item from the level okay so we say level and then there is a function or a method called get item by name and also get layer by name if you need it so get item by name and now let's get the item what was the name texture one okay texture one that was the name okay so if everything works I'll have texture one here inside this variable called item now I can say if item custom properties and since custom properties is a serializable dictionary I can just say contains okay I can just ask if it contains um, contains key um, property 3 or property 1 then do something okay this way I check if there is a custom property called property 1 okay now if there is one I can check its type if custom properties now prop 1 type is type of pool then do something else and what are we going to do let's say pool uh, test equals to now we can cast pool and then take this dot value 